Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new. So today we are going to be starting our July color along which I'm really excited about. So I've got my books here. I've got my uh, color swatch book because this is handy to have. I've got my color combinations book because I'm not really sure what colors we're going to be using. Um, so I'm definitely going to need this to kind of figure that out. And then the book that we are going to be doing a color along is Whimsy Girls Around the World. And I decided that we are going to color Oh Canada. I think that's what this one is called. Let me just double check here. Yeah, Oh Canada. So I wanted to color this one because July 1st is Canada Day. And July 1st is also a Friday this year, so I thought it would be fitting to have the first part of this video come out on Canada Day. So I love this picture. It is so cute. Just everything about this is so Canadian. The, the plaid or flannel, whatever you want to call it. The coffee mug with the mousse on it. I've got some maple syrup. It's just absolutely beautiful. So I definitely want to color this. And we are going to be using... Oh, it was already unzipped. I just sipped it up. <laughs> we are going to be using the Prismacolor Premiers for this. So I'm super excited. I only have some colors picked out so far, and then the rest we're going to kind of wing it. So um, we'll kind of see how that goes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple pieces of blank paper to put in behind the page. That way we can protect the tooth on the page behind it. We won't be pressing into the next page at all. And then the nice thing about Whimsy Girls Around the World is she's got two versions of each page. So there's a simplified and detailed. Of course, I'm going to tackle the detailed version, but you could color whichever version you wanted. Also, fingers crossed that the audio in this is okay. Um, I'm using a new mic, so hopefully it helps. Um, it is really windy outside. It's stormy today. It's just terrible. So I've got my ring light for lighting because the sun is just not here today. Um, so hopefully it doesn't pick up too much of the background noise from the wind. But um, unfortunately, if it does, there's not much I can do about that because I can't push recording this any further. I need to get this done. So, yeah, I want to get at least a couple parts filmed this week. Hopefully we have nicer weather tomorrow, and then I'll film another couple parts. But yeah, um, so we're going to actually start with the trees here, because that's kind of the only thing I really know what I want to color. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here, and I grabbed my color swatches, but I didn't grab the colors out. So let me just do that quick. So I'm going to kind of work backwards here. I'm actually going to start with the indigo blue. I know I usually start putting in the lighter color first. And I mean, we could, but I don't feel like it's extremely necessary. I'm also just going to pull up someone else's colored version picture of this because um, I don't really know what is what. There's definitely like a lot of detail in this page, so I want to make sure that it's okay. Okay, so just browsing through the... I like to browse through the images to kind of get ideas. You know, my ring light is going to be a pain here. I'll see if I can kind of block it a bit. So there's definitely lots of greens and stuff. Um, I really like this version where the trees are orange. It's kind of like an autumn kind of vibe to this one. I do like that, so that's an idea. Um, there's another one with kind of autumn trees. Maybe we should do that. I think it'll add some extra interest to the picture. And then... Um, I think it'd just be kind of fun to show you guys how I tackle, like, autumn-style stuff. I don't think I've ever done autumn trees before, but I've done autumn leaves. And I kind of don't really know what I'm doing and kind of winged it, and I think it turned out pretty good, so maybe that would be fun to do here, too. Yeah, I think I like the idea of doing autumn trees as well because there is so much trees in the background, and that's going to be a lot of green, so... 
Okay, we're gonna start in with our indigo blue. Let me just see how much we can see in frame here. Okay. Um, okay, we gotta figure out our a light source. So our light source is gonna be coming in from this corner. So everything kind of on the left is gonna be shadowed. Everything on the right is gonna have a highlight on it. So I'm just gonna come in with my indigo blue pretty much just all along the left side of these trees here. Now, unfortunately, these trees are a little bit scrawny, so there's not really a whole lot of room to play around with. But we'll just kind of squeeze in what we can. So for now, I'm just kind of focusing on the uh, the side of the tree. So it's going to kind of look funny for a little bit here. And then we're going to go kind of underneath these lines here because there's different layers to these trees. So we do want to create some shadows in around those layers as well. Even create our own in like areas like this where it's like a really long area. Wind is just brutal. I'm always torn between like coloring all of the objects like at the exact same time, like all of these trees at the same time, so that way they're all colored in the same way. But I usually get like too impatient and I want to see how it looks, so I usually just like finish one and then finish another one. <laughs> but then we're constantly also switching pencils back and forth too, so. And I don't necessarily want them all to look the same. They're going to be the same color, but they don't need to look the same. Yeah, I think here where I am in Canada, um, usually we get a lot of rain in May. And I think May and June got confused because it was really nice and warm for the most part last month. And now it's just gross. <laughs> So I'm kind of thinking for the sky, it would be fun to do a sunrise. Um, I'm definitely a sunrise over the sunset kind of person just because the sunrise colors are just so much more softer and just beautiful. You can get some soft sunrise colors, but they're usually pretty vivid and bright because of the sun. Um, but the sunrise is usually a little bit lighter, kind of more pastel colors almost. So I, I want to do that. I want to have kind of some sun rays coming through. So we'll just pretend that the sun is in this corner. We'll maybe have like a little bit of white and then have some sun rays. That's my plan. I'm hoping it turns out okay. And then I kind of want to keep this picture somewhat realistic, but at the same time not. I wanted to make the mountains kind of colorful, and that's why I was thinking of having a sunrise, because if we make the mountains a little bit colorful, we can just say that it's the colors from the sunrise playing off the mountains. So I think that would be pretty fun. And it wouldn't even have to be the mountains themselves. We could do the mountains in normal color and then the little snow caps or whatever are on here. Um, we could do those as like a lighter color. So do them as like snow and then we'll have the, the sunset reflecting on the snow, I think is my plan. But yeah, whether or not that actually turns out is a different story, but we'll see. And other than that, I have really no idea what for colors. I mean, obviously the water is going to be blue. I do want to change her shirt up a little bit too. I'm just going to put a little bit of indigo blue in on this tree behind this one. There's not really a lot of room, so I don't want to add too much shadow. But just kind of in these areas where this tree cuts inwards and we have a little bit more room, we'll add some of the indigo blue just so they're a little bit more unanimous. But yeah, I do want to change her shirt. Um, I want it to look more of like a plaid instead of a flannel. I think there was someone who actually did that too. Uh, let me see if I can find it. 
Yeah, so this one I think, I think Tabitha Ruth did this. Yeah, so Tabitha did this one. And this is kind of more the shirt style that I wanted to go with as well. So I'll kind of have to figure out how she did that. I think she was the only one that did that. Everyone else just kind of kept that checkerboard one. I don't even know if you can see that because the ring light is going to be a pain, but it should be interesting anyways. Okay, I think the rest of these trees are a little bit different. Don't really know what's what, unfortunately. I gotta find the picture that stands out the most to me so I can kind of follow their shading and stuff. Okay, so I think we're gonna color in this as the same as the, I know this is a different tree back here, but we're gonna color it kind of the same up to here. Here's where we'll start having the trees look different. It's going to be fairly dark back here, so we can just pop quite a bit of the um, indigo blue in there. So maybe have this tree kind of come down to here. That's where the bushes start. And then this one, we'll have it come down to here where the bushes visibly start. Mm. Trying to decide if these little spots here are part of these trees or these trees. I think these trees, maybe. I think they really could be any, so it's more just preference on what you want to go with. It's the only tricky thing about really detailed pictures like this, because it's kind of hard to figure out what is what. <laughs> okay, so we also have some trees kind of peeking up from he back here. So we're just going to add a little bit of color to these as well. They don't have to be perfect. As long as they've got color to them, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be fairly dark too, so you're not really going to notice them a whole bunch. Okay, so then we're just going to come in and we're going to darken up some of these shadows. Just kind of randomly. Um, especially in the back and we're not burnishing the page we're using a slightly heavier pressure but we're just kind of going over the same area over and over again and then along here too i don't really know what's what so I think we're just gonna color this in too and we'll come in with we've got another darker color that we're gonna come in with and we'll probably just color it with that just gotta figure out what to bring it up to and there's like a little bit of a line here so I think I'm just gonna bring it that up to here and then the rest can be mountains in behind there maybe I think that makes the most sense to me and then I think I'm also gonna color in kind of up to here too this little area here So next is sepia. And coffee, because that's important. Okay, so the sepia, for the most part, we're going to reserve this for our really dark areas. So I'm just going to go over the indigo blue, in the very backs of the trees here. kind of give it a darker color that's going to kind of push it behind everything. Okay, 
I am also going to put some of it on these trees as well, but just a little bit, just in the very darker areas. So immediately underneath some of these lines and immediately to the left of the trees. So we're not going to fully go over the indigo, indigo blue like we have done over here. We're just going to add to it. Don't need too much on this tree, especially coming in down here for two reasons. One, this tree is the closest to us, and two, because these little areas in behind it are going to be pretty dark, and we don't want it to match with the tree too much, otherwise it's not going to stand out from it. So just a little tiny bit. And then same with this one. This one's fairly close to. Curious to see how bad the wind sounds after I'm done recording. All right. We're good with that one, so now we're going to move on to our dark green. So we're going to start in over top of our shadow colors, and then we're going to blend out from those and kind of fade a little bit. So I'm using a fairly firm pressure in anywhere we put shadows and then just kind of fading out from that, saving a little bit of white because I do have um, the parrot green as another color, but I'm not sure if I'm going to add it because they're very different. Um, I'm kind of trying to figure out if I want these to be more of like the bluish green trees or like the this color trees I'm not really sure these areas back here we're just going to completely burnish as we go along
All right, we're just gonna keep adding. My hand's actually starting to hurt. <laughs> I don't know about the parrot green. I think it might be nice, but at the same time, I'm just not sure. Okay, and again, back here for the most part, we're just going to burnish this, I think. These trees kind of poking up out of here, we'll leave a little bit of a highlight on these. Okay, this one too is pretty much just going to be burnished with the green, I think. One more on this side at least. We do have lots more on the other side, but we're getting there at least. Okay. I think we are going to go ahead with the parrot green because I'm going to stick to my original um, gut feeling about colors. So we're just going to add this into the dark green 
We're gonna kind of fade it out a little bit more. We're not burnishing or anything and we are still leaving a little bit of white area for our last color. I am like a sucker for those pine trees that have that like really pretty greenish blue color so that's kind of why I went with these colors and I feel like it should go with pretty much anything that we choose for this page for the most part it's gonna be pretty natural um, which I'm excited about because a lot of the times the pages that I color are very like fantasy and like vivid and colorful so it's nice to color a natural looking page every once in a while And this is actually my first page in this book too, so that's another reason why I wanted to go for this book, because I haven't colored in it yet. I was kind of thinking too, um, some of these pages with, or some of these books with the simplified pages, like this page, I probably wouldn't really want to color this again, um, but it would be great to use her to practice skin tones, even if I don't finish the page. So I'm actually kind of debating doing that. I think it would bother my OCD a little bit, but at the same time, it'd be really good practice. So I keep telling myself, like, I'm probably not going to color the images again. And it's not like they're the exact same image, right? It's a different version of it. So um, some of them I do gravitate more towards the simplified version. And those ones, I probably would keep both. I wouldn't use the spare one as a practice page. But if I like the detailed version more than the simplified version, I'd probably use the simplified version to practice skin tones or like whatever else is on the page. Like if there's water or something and you want to practice, it's, it's a good way to do that. And then you'll always have one finished version and then one practice page. And I was kind of thinking that'd be super helpful for um, some of the darker skin toned or some of the some of the girls that would be better suited for darker skin tones that I'm like weary about because I don't want to wreck them. It'd be good to practice their skin on the actual girl so you can see what it would look like, but not on the page you want to color, if that makes sense. I'm gonna add a little bit of the parrot green up here too, still remembering to leave a little bit of highlights. But yeah, I, I need a good dark skin tone combination because the ones that I've tried, they just never look good. All right, our last color is the light green. So we are gonna go in on the areas that we left white. We're gonna color those in and then we are going to blend into everything else and kind of burnish everything all together. I gotta say, as much as the wind is annoying, it's actually kind of peaceful to listen to sometimes. 
I really hope it's not bothering you guys though. So I should probably pop up and make sure we're still recording. Okay, we're only half an hour in. Although I must admit that this isn't very good progress for half an hour, but um, I think I'm gonna do an hour and a half parts for this. Um, at least for the first couple parts, uh, just so I can see kind of where we're getting and we'll go from there. But we do have five Fridays in July, so that is exciting. Um, that was another reason why I kind of picked more of a detailed piece, because we do have an extra video if we need it. Oh, this is looking so pretty. I like this. Oh, I forgot about this little bit right here. All right, now we're gonna go back in with our sepia. Just kind of, for the most part, everything's pretty much burnished, but I'm just gonna kind of bring back those shadows in these darker areas back here. Um, just because the light peach kind of got rid of some of the line work, so if we add some shadows back in, it'll kind of make it pop out a little bit more. There, I think that's okay. All right, so there's one side of the trees done. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think that's a little better. Hopefully it wasn't that blurry the whole time. If it was, I apologize. Um, I did not notice that. Okay, so now we're going to kind of come in on this side and do kind of the same thing. It's going to be a little bit different because we've just got all of these um, little tiny shapes of trees back there just to show that there's trees, but there's really not a whole lot of room to do much with them. So we're going to have to try and fit shadows and highlights in here and kind of be smart with it so that way it still looks like trees. So I'm going to kind of outline on the outer side of the lines for um, I think most of these trees. And kind of just fade out a little bit, putting some shadows along some of the lines. Try not to add too much because we can always add more later if we need to, but we're just going to kind of build this up and kind of see what we get. Um, but 
with the foam. Let me just check and make sure that it's not blurry. I think it's okay. Um, I definitely want to invest in a camera. So um, this video, if everything goes well, should be out on July 1st, and that's when our memberships start. So um, I don't know how many people will get for the memberships. It'll be interesting to see, though. And then I'm going to save up all of the channel income and start kind of researching into what kind of camera to get. Uh, I'm not very tech savvy, so I don't really know. I mean, we don't need anything too fancy. Um, just something that... Uh, be nice to have something that I can kind of connect to my computer so we can actually, I can see what I'm coloring. I can't do that with a phone. Um, you can use the mirror on it, but it, it kind of flips it kind of funny. I've tried a few different mirroring apps and a few other things and it's just, it's not the best, but for me, it's important for me to be able to see what I'm coloring without having to stand up and look um, at the phone screen every five to 10 minutes because it is really disheartening when my phone stops recording for some reason and I lose footage or I'm out of frame and you guys can't even see what I'm doing. And I know it's probably annoying for you guys too. And I figure if I'm gonna take all this time to make videos, I want them to be the best that they can be for you guys. So um, a decent camera is definitely on the list. All right, sepia. Now this one, we're just gonna go in kind of like in the valleys where the trees meet. So like the bottom parts of the V's here. Anywhere that you can add like a little bit of this color without it looking like it's taking over pretty much. So we just want little bits. And then, yeah, I was even thinking maybe even like a used camera would be okay for the channel because that would also save on cost too. But I think the memberships will be pretty good. I put a lot of thought into them. I didn't want them to be too expensive. So the most expensive one is going to be $5 a month. I didn't want to go any higher than that. Um, I know YouTube recommends that you have one um, generally between $1 and $5 and then between 5 and 10 And then I think the next one they suggest having between like 10 and 15 But I did not want to go up that high So I do have three tiers But the two first tiers are in the lower portion of income And then the last one is the $5 one And I wanted to kind of make the perks manageable I didn't want to do something that I wouldn't be able to keep up with so I'm excited to, for you guys to see what the perks are. And then the perks that I went with, especially for the $5 tier, is gonna keep me more, what's the word? Um, hmm, my brain's not working. I like wanna say responsible, but it's not the word I'm looking for. It's gonna keep me accountable. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but something like that. Anyways. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the dark green. So we're just gonna first color over all of these areas that we just put our indigo blue and our sepia. And then we'll come back in on the actual tree parts. Right now we're just kind of doing like the shadows in behind the trees and stuff. It's technically still all trees, but the actual tree shapes will come back in on figure out our shadows for the front parts of those. Okay, so our light's coming in from this way. So I don't really know where our shadows would be on these, but I think I'm just gonna add them to the right. 
I'm not going to make them dark, though, because I feel like the sun being, like, right up here would kind of make it so, like, the whole tops of the trees would be light. But we do still need, like, a little bit of color on them, too. So, yeah, I'm going to do the right sides just a little bit. I think that looks good. Not too much. Okay, so parrot green is next. Bear with me, my leg is really itchy right now. Okay, that's better. I think I got a mosquito bite. They're back. I hate those guys. All right, so peacock green. I'm gonna add a little bit of this kind of in over everywhere and then make sure we're saving highlights. So we want lots of like little green or little white spaces. So again, this is another area that you don't have to be too perfect with. I'm just kind of like messily laying down colors because actually the more imperfect it looks, the better it's going to look in the end. So you're not really going to see detail back this far. You're just going to see the color, just blobs of color for the most part. Okay, I think that looks good. Oh, I forgot about this tree here. I wasn't sure about this one because, you know, these trees, they have like these really long tree stumps. You can't even see what I'm looking at because I'm zoomed in on this side. But on your page, um, the other trees that we did, they have the, these long stumps, and then this one's just kind of sitting here. So I don't know if this is the same kind of tree. So I don't really know what to do with it. But I think we're going to go ahead and color it the same, because I don't really know what other color we would do. And I don't want to bring in like a whole nother different green color just for one tree. Yeah. I think it might look funny if we did that. All right, so in with our light green. I don't want to get rid of the shadows in this. So what we're going to do is we are just going to color in the highlights. We're going to bring it a little bit into the shadows, but we're not going to just color over everything. And I'm just using straight line motions instead of circles because I don't want to blend the colors in together. I want them to kind of stand out because that's going to give us our little bit of detail back here. Um, if you kind of colored in circles and blended everything together, it's just going to look like a big blob of green, and we don't want that. I was thinking we would need a blender pencil, but I think I actually like how this is looking without it. That looks really good. That looks better than even over here. Okay, I'm a big fan of that. That's good. I think I actually want to do the sky and the mountains, even though like I'm the most nervous for those. Yeah. 
do the sky and the mountains next, and then we'll do the bushes if we have time. I think I'm gonna leave these trees for next time. Um, and then again, I keep forgetting about this little tree here, so we gotta color this guy first. Okay. So we're just gonna do the same steps that we did on these trees over here. But for the most part, our shadows are just gonna be kind of like under these lines of the different layers of the tree. There's our indigo blue and we'll add in our sepia and again this is just going to be in like the very direct shadows so we're not going to go too much into the indigo blue we're just going to go directly under these lines fade it out very very slightly and then that's it i think to differentiate this tree um, it's just going to be lighter so let's go in with the dark green. We're going to go over our shadows and then bring this out just a tiny bit. This is going to be mostly highlights. So I'm not bringing the dark green out much farther than we did our shadow colors. Make sure it has a nice blend though. Okay, parrot green is next. This one too, we're just gonna put it over our shadow colors and bring it out just slightly. Alright, and lastly with our light green. So you'll notice I'm starting with the white areas and then working the green into the shadows. That's because we want to keep it fairly light. Um, and then push back into the shadows to kind of lighten those up a little bit too. Otherwise, if we're going into the shadows first, we're gonna drag the shadows and the darker colors into our highlights and we don't want that. There, so it still looks the same as the other ones, but it's just a little bit lighter. Um, and I just got to quickly check something. Paul Brandt is going to be playing in Brooks in August. And I just wanted to see, oh my goodness. How is this even possible? Okay, there we go. Told me that tickets were sold out. They just went live literally like right now. They're expensive. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to think on that one.
All right, so our sky colors. I guess we'll get rid of those since we're changing to the sky. Maybe we should do the mountain first or... I'm just going to pause. Give me one sec. Okay, so... This right here is kind of what I'm looking for, kind of in between this one and this one. I'm not sure which one I like more, but we'll definitely go for one of those. Um, they both have six colors. Most of this is going to be greens, browns, we'll have a little bit of blues, reds. I think the only other thing that will really have colors is like the flowers, the bouquet that she has. So I think I'm actually going to go with this one. Okay, so there is our sky colors. Um, So I'm just going to search up sunrise with sun rays. I mean, technically, this isn't really going to be a sunrise because the sun's already going to be up here kind of thing, but I mean, I guess it still could be. Okay, I think we've got a general idea. Okay, I'm going to pull up my reference picture here and then we'll get started. So the first thing we want to do is map out our sun rays. Um, so I'm just going to grab a normal pencil and a ruler. Our sun is going to be right here. And I'm just very, very lightly touching the page. And then we'll figure out our sun rays. So one kind of coming down like this. Maybe one over this way. And actually here, um, the best way to do this is just gently erase this. Okay, this corner is going to be our sun. So just this, this corner right here. So we're going to make sure our ruler is always lined up with that spot when we're making our rays. So this one's actually going to come down here like this. We'll make this one a bit small. This one can be a bit bigger. Make another small one here. Let's go back to this one because I forgot to go like this. And then let's do one more kind of up here. Okay, I don't mind that, but I 
think I want this one to be a bit smaller. Yeah, I like that. And then this one, I want to change a little bit. So I actually want this one to start here. And it's just going to go all the way across. So we're just going to kind of leave it like that. All right. So this is going to be a little bit confusing, but it will be worth it. So I'm just going to grab out my color swatches here. Okay, so I'm more certain on these sunrise colors than I am the rays. So we're just going to kind of wing this. Um, let's see, we're going to start off with our deco pink. I think we're going to start that about right here. I'm kind of coloring in like the center and then I'm not completely coloring up to the rays that we've drawn in because we need to be able to fade them. So just kind of doing little bits at a time. Okay, there's our deco pink. Let's move up to our pink rose. And we're just kind of basing our colors so they don't have to be too perfect or anything. Just kind of seeing where things are going to line up. Okay, I'm going to take our blue violet lake and I'm just going to kind of lightly go over this whole upper area. Oh, sorry, I wasn't using my swatches. That was the blue violet lake. Um, Cerulean blue is next. I'm just going to lightly go over that kind of close to the pink here. We are going to bring in some color up here. back to our pink rose. We'll add some of that in here. Okay, so that gives us a decent base for our sunrise. Um, I'm just going to look at these sunbeams again just to kind of figure out what we're doing. So for the most part, you can still see the colors. They're just very whited out. So um, let's 
let's start on this side because our sun isn't going to reach that far. So it'll actually be a little bit darker over here. So we're going to come in with the light cerulean blue. I'm going to bring this along the very top. I'm using kind of a light to medium pressure. And then we're just fading it down a little bit. We don't want to burnish anything because we're going to go over the entire page with the white later on, or at least so far that's the plan, we'll see. We're going to go over the entire page with something, whether it's the white or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so when we get closer to over here, I'm going to start lightening my color up. I'm going to go back to a light pressure and just layer to build it up. We'll lighten it up even closer as we get closer to the sun there. And then again, just bring it down a little bit. I don't want to keep this pencil in here. I think we have enough color for the most part that we know where the rays are going to be. Um, I'm going to take the deco pink here quick and I'm just going to bring this down a little bit further, kind of fading it out here. And then we'll grab our cream and add that in. Okay, I think that's good. So then we can take an eraser and erase this. I wasn't even thinking, I guess that's another way you can make rays is by doing it this way. Putting in your color and then lightly erasing the rays and then going in with white, but I want to try making our own and see how that goes. Okay, so I'm just going to bring back the cerulean blue. I want to keep building up this layer here. Very, very lightly going to bring it down. Let's go in with our blue violet lake. I'm going to put this in over top of the light cerulean blue and kind of blend it down as well. I'm keeping our little sun here white for now.
So this is a good transition color between the light cerulean blue and the pinks. Pink Rose is next up. I'm going to sharpen this. I am going to add some in at the top here. I think we've ended up kind of having a ray here instead and I'm okay with that so we're gonna keep that because that looks that looks okay and then we can kind of keep up here a little bit darker so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker pressure with the pink rose just at the very top again fading it out as we get closer to where the Sun is because we want that to stay light We want to make sure that we're keeping color in the sunbeams, but they're not going to be as dark as the colors kind of on the outside of them, if that makes sense. Let's switch to our deco pink. I'm going to bring this color up at the top here. bringing it in towards the sun, darkening up these colors. I'm just focusing on the normal sky right now. And then once we're happy with that, we can start kind of fading this color out lightly into the sun rays. We're going to lightly fade this off as we get closer to the bottom because it's going to be a little bit of a different color. We're going to kind of switch into the cream.
then we'll switch to our cream. So we're going to add a little bit up here. This is a sunbeam, so we've got to be a little bit lighter with it. And we're actually going to bring this color kind of all the way up the sunbeams. Even if that's not where it normally is in the sky, because I think that'll kind of help our sunbeam stick out a little bit more. This right here is a sunbeam too. It's actually just lightly colored in the sun as well. Okay, going in on the normal sky, I'm gonna press a little bit darker and fade this out into the sunbeams. We're going to switch back to the pink rose. I want to put a little bit of the pink rose in underneath this cloud on the normal sky part here and here. And then this is a sunbeam, so we don't want to do that there, but we'll add a little bit on the normal sky here as well. And we're not going to extend that shadow into the sunbeams, I don't think. Actually, let's do it just very, very, very lightly. We almost can't even notice it. Okay, let's go in with our Blue Violet Lake again, and I'm going to use this to put a shadow in underneath the main sky parts on this cloud. And then just very lightly over the beam parts. Lightly bring some of the blue violet lake into the cream, just tiny little bits. I'm not even really covering, I'm just kind of kind of striping some down. We're gonna go back in with our deco pink. I'm gonna darken this up a little bit more just by adding some layers. Blend it into the cream a little bit nicer. And then we'll go back into the cream and just again lightly go over everything. Maybe make it darker towards the center of the sun and then fade it out. Okay, so I think what we're going to do to burnish this, because we haven't used our cloud blue yet and I want to use that one, and then we also haven't used our white, which I'm going to need a pencil extender for. Um, so the sunbeams we're going to burnish with the white. And then the sky we're going to burnish with the cloud blue. I'm 
My weight is almost dead. Now you want to have very sharp points on these. I don't know if I can get a super sharp point on my white. Not bad, it's decent, okay. So we're going to start with the cloud blue. We're going to start over here. I'm going to start in the pink and then I'm going to bring this up to the cloud blue, or cerulean blue. I'm going to start with like a medium pressure and then gently build the pressure up to where we're burnishing it. We're going to lighten up our pressure as we get close to the rays, and we're just going to lightly bring this down into them. So kind of the same thing here. We're just going to burnish kind of like in the center of the sky here, and then lightly fade it out as you get closer to the rays. Here we're going to go in with the white. I did have a swatch for this. I'm going to turn my book this way. And we are going to blend the white kind of horizontally, if that makes sense. So we're going to blend it into the other colors. I missed erasing this line here, unfortunately. So I'm just going to erase a little bit of that now. We might just turn that into cloud, maybe. I don't know. Actually, it probably won't even be too noticeable. And there we go, there is our sunrise. That is so pretty. Okay, so now we just need to work on our clouds. 
And then I think that's going to be it for this part. Okay, so we're going to start by basing our clouds with the cream. Okay, and then we're gonna go into the deco pink. I'm gonna start this at the bottom and we're just gonna bring it up kind of midway and fade it out. I don't want it to be, you know, completely straight across the cloud, so just bring it up a little bit higher in some parts, lower in others. I like to kind of bring it up to the same height as the top. So like areas like this would be up a little higher and then lower and a little bit lower. All right, pink rose is next. We do the same thing, we just won't bring it up as high. Super light layers, we're just basing. And then I'm actually gonna use, I think the Blue Violet Lake for the shadows of the clouds. I'm just gonna very lightly add this in though because I just want that little bit of a blue tinge. So just kind of along the bottom. This cloud we're just gonna do really light. This cloud we're gonna use a little bit of a darker pressure or heavier pressure, darker color. Just as we get away from the sun, the clouds should be a little bit darker, I think. And maybe not so much darker or heavier pressure, but just more layers, just build up a little bit. Yeah, so then this cloud over here will be the darkest. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back in with our pink rose. So we're going to blend that into our Blue Violet Lake and we're going to bring it up a little bit. And fade it out. And then remember we want lighter colors over here. We'll move on to our deco pink. Add some of this cloud here because this one we're not really going to get much shadow on, and I almost forgot about it so. All right, and then our cream, just lightly. We'll go over everything again. Mostly at the top though, just to kind of give the cloud that yellowish glow from the sun.
And then I'm just trying to decide if we want the clouds to kind of stand out or not. We could see, I'm just going to grab my white here. I'm just going to burnish just the corner of this one to see what it'll look like. It's going to look pretty soft, but I think that'd be good. Let's do that. So we'll burnish them with the white. And I'm also just going to kind of bring the white over the line as well. So I'm kind of going into the sky a little bit. And that's going to give the clouds a little bit of a softer look. All right, and then last but not least, let's add some Posca. So we're gonna use this to outline the clouds. And there we go. Super whimsical, super cute. It looks awesome. I'm just gonna take some of the white and just kind of bring it along the side here. There we go. All right, I think that's gonna be it for part one. Um, we got quite a bit done. Hopefully we won't need more than five parts for this, but it is really detailed. I really like how it's looking right now. I can't wait to do those mountains. Um, those might be the next part, maybe not, we'll see. But yeah. Um, outro. All right, I think that's it for part one. So it'll be interesting to see how much we can get done within the next four parts. I don't feel like we got a whole lot done for part one, but <laughs> um, I'm sure some will probably go faster than others. There was a lot of detail that we wanted to add in ourselves here, and I think it's definitely worth the extra effort. I think this might be like the best um, sunset sky I have ever done, so I'm quite happy with that. So hopefully you guys are enjoying and hopefully I will see you guys in part two. As always, take care and see you next time. All right. Bye guys. <laughs>